take a cup and to thine Yes, yes, the hell is here. Today we have Home Free Old Lang Syne. This traditionally is a New Year's song, so this will mark the end of 2023. I hope everyone had a great 2023 and that there's an even better 2024 in store for you. This has been recommended to me a number of times and most of those recommendations include the fact that this is five part harmony. So I'm expecting some nice harmonies and I'm eager to see what they do with this very traditional song. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should old acquaintance be forgot and days of old lang Yet for old Lang and he Sorry, Rob, but there's a lot to talk about there. Their voices just work so well together. They blend so nicely. I think this is a very nice one so far. It's certainly traditional in the sense that there's no modern beat accompanying the music. We have some very nice five-part harmonies here. There's also a lot of homophony, everyone singing the same words at the same time in the same rhythm. But I also like how the video is modern. They're singing in an extremely modern high-tech recording studio. I think it's a nice touch. They're being traditional, standing still, no choreography or movement or any difference really. And it's as if they're saying, let's choose a modern setting for, by our standards, a relatively traditional arrangement. So from what we just heard, I'd just like to go over a few points. Home free being home free, they love to get their juicy chords in. Chords that I would normally say are filthy, but good filthy. The first one I heard was here which was the end of the lyricless introduction. So in the video, they're showing it as four parts. Adam isn't singing at this part in the video, but we do hear more than four parts in this chord. This is the chord that we're hearing. I think their choice to just show four singers at this point is purely stylistic. One, maybe Adam isn't actually singing a part here and they've used multi-tracking and this is just their way of showing it. For example, maybe Tim is singing two parts. And two, even though there are five parts that aren't actually five different notes, there are only four different notes. If we take a look at the chord again, you can see that the different notes by letter we have are A, E, B and C sharp. This one is an A, just like this one. So they're the same note, just at a different octave. If you have five different notes, so different letters, if you added in another letter in there, the chord naturally is just gonna sound much more juicy because at that point, we're moving away from traditional harmony. A traditional chord is made up of three different notes. And in this chord, the juicy note is the B. And as we are in A, the B, is the second note of the scale, which we call the supertonic. When used well, and when sung very in tune, like home free are here, I think it always, always sounds nice. So the introduction, I like it. It's nice, it's almost quite mystical. There aren't any lyrics. And the introduction begins mid-statement. <laughs> We're in the middle of a melodic line. So their melody here goes, <laughs> but the melody from the song that we're used to is, so it starts with they've added two notes which naturally displaces in our heads where if there were words the words would be so they've made the melodic line longer if you think of it that way in terms of syllables if we were to use the lyrics and take a cup of kindness normally it would be and take a cup of kind but here it's and take a cup of it sounds a bit different so because of that it's not immediately clear what's happening at this introduction we're kind of thinking hang on are we where are we starting from are we starting at the middle of something have i missed something it's a nice little short prelude to grab our attention and then we get this entry should all 
the queen. Being a home free arrangement, starting with Tim like they so often like to do from what I've seen. That note he comes in on, by the way. That's a bottom E, as it's called in the choral world, which is typically the lowest note a bass is expected to sing. Then we have a very quick thickening of the texture, so more voices coming in. And never brought to mind should and then everyone. So now that we have everyone in through that layering of voices, the arrangement is fairly bass heavy. I mentioned this in my reaction to Silent Night, I noticed the same thing there. And because of their lower registers, there are slower frequencies, it's quite difficult to distinguish the harmonies. So I really love how their voices work and blend together to create these really rich blends of sounds, even when singing quite low in the registers. And of course, this allows for a natural rising melodic arc throughout the piece, which will probably culminate in Austin singing the melody as we so often see. Following on from that point, we do get a little taste of the upper registers now, and this comes in Adam. Listen up for Adam, he goes, <laughs> From an arrangement perspective though, on that note, you'll hear Rob comes in and takes over Adam's note, which then allows Adam to rise and go up. And then a bit further on, on For Old Lang Syne, I really, really like the chord structure and the progression that they use here. For old Lang Syne. We basically have a juicy chord on old. old. Then they split Lang into two. And in the first part, we have a more traditional chord. And what I mean by traditional is, as I mentioned earlier, it's just the three notes that you'd find in a traditional triad. And then the second part of Lang is a more juicy chord. And then on Zion, again, it's more of a traditional chord from a harmonic point of view. Line. They're teasing us. Are they gonna get filthy, good filthy, or not? Or are they gonna stay traditional? All right, let's carry on. Line. And here's a hand, my trusty friend, that gives a hand to thine. We'll take a cup of kindness yet for old Lang Syne. For old Lang Syne, my dear. For old Lang Syne, we'll take a cup of kindness yet. For all things I should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind should old acquaintance be forgot and days of old Lang Nicely done, very nice arrangement, I like that. As I mentioned before, the arrangement was mostly homophonic, at least in the first half, with them all just singing the same words at the same time together. But then here, Here's a hand. these little snippets to break up the homophony are very clever, I think. They're not frequent, but they're just frequent enough to keep some variety in the performance so it's not just the same thing repeated. Then here, after singing Cup, we'll take a cup of kind. Forgive my use of better terminology, but to me it sounds like Rob has a bit of a country style lick there. Traditionally, from a lyrical perspective, you wouldn't take a breath mid-phrase, you'd finish the phrase, we'll take a cup of kindness yet, and then you'd breathe afterwards. So the choice of them to all breathe here and everyone to come off, so no one's singing after cup, to me that kind of exaggerates Rob's little country style lick that they've put in. A cup. And in turn it really adds uh, like a little home free mark to this traditional song. So then for Austin's entry here. For old Lang Syne, my You'll notice that no one else was singing for a lot of that. We also had this for similar entries earlier, with Tim's entry and then with Rob's entry. But each of them are singing on their own for a different amount of time. Tim was on his own for eight beats, Rob for one beat. Austin here has five beats. And then after that, Chance has one beat just like Rob did. This is an example of a very subtle way to change the overall structure of the piece, whilst also keeping the original feel of the piece the same, if that makes sense. So this next part I'm about to play, we have this really nice full sound higher up in everyone's registers, except for Tim, who is the 
descending downwards and finishing low, which exaggerates how high up everyone else is. My dear, for all lang syne. I particularly like the highest part, though, the part above Austin. If they've not used multi tracking here, then that part will be Adam, because I've heard Adam's higher register before, and I think it's such a nice, clean sound. This note up there is an A which is towards the top of an operatic tenor's range. So being at that kind of register, you need to decide if you're going to sing it with your head voice or falsetto for a lighter, softer sound, or try and do it with a chest voice for a really powerful sound, like Austin often will have if you sing a melody or towards a climax. Or you can also have a blend of the two, a blend of your head voice or your chest voice. And to me here, it sounds like Adam is doing that, which in itself isn't an easy thing to do. So yeah, I really like Adam's voice. So I, I'd like to hear more of it. Okay, this part. Ever brought to that line, is that Tim singing falsetto? I think it is. And never brought to mind. The timbre sounds slightly different to Austin and Adam, and it's not Rob and Chance is singing the melody. If it is Tim, that's fun. I like that. I like how they can be malleable with their arrangements. The bass isn't confined to just singing the low bass parts. This is just another point, I think, towards the group's versatility. And then final point, right at the end, we have the melody being one of the lowest parts. And day of old Lang Syne. It's bass heavy, rich harmonies, it's difficult to distinguish each part. And the penultimate chord on Lang. Old Lang Syne. They include the closest clash possible, a G sharp and an A. Before finishing on a nice, simple, traditional chord, no funkiness or juiciness there. Just the three different notes, as traditional a chord you can get. Overall, I, yeah, I really liked that arrangement. I thought it was great. They were testing the boundaries of how harmonically dangerous they could get. But I think, as a whole, it was perfect. Traditional, very respectful to the original song, I feel. I like the setting of the video. They had their little home free marks, some country style licks, some nice juicy chords, but nothing too crazy. I don't think there's anyone who will hear that and think, oh, that's a bit too out there for me. Well, let's leave it there. As I said at the beginning, I hope everyone had a wonderful 2023 and I wish you all an even better 2024. As always, thank you for watching. Would appreciate it, like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.